Hey everyone, it's a hot and humid day here in Northeast Ohio and I couldn't think of anything better to do than a coop tour. Hey everyone, we have been invited out to Copley, Ohio to tour Miss Kelly's coops. And I say coops because she has more than one type of poultry and more birds than I can count. So this should be pretty fun. So Kelly, how long have you had birds? I started with ducks probably 10 years ago. And since then, I've acquired quite a few. Wow, so you have more than 100 birds on the premises? I would say probably. Okay. It's top secret. <laughs> so we would call this poultry math because what types of poultry do you have? Um, the ducks, chickens, pheasant, quail, doves, budgies, finches. I saw some peacocks. Peacocks, I mean, that's right, I forgot that. It's, pretty, it's a pretty phenomenal setup. And I just want to remind you guys, these coop tours are intended to give you guys ideas and to inspire you. This is not to show you that chicken keeping and poultry keeping is a one size fits all. We all do it our own way. We all learn at our own pace. So maybe you could take some of these ideas and put it on your honeydew list or on your chicken bucket list. So I'm really excited to kind of see what you guys have done here. Um, so why don't we take a step into the aviary? Yes, she has an aviary. Let's go take a look. So Kelly, can you tell me a little bit about how this aviary came into effect? Like, did you just say, I want a big aviary? I did, that happened. <laughs> I actually free range chickens for a couple years and although I would say I'm team free range for all the health benefits of free range, I got too emotionally attached to my chickens and I kept losing them. So I decided that it was time to do a run um, to protect them just because we have so much wildlife out here. So speaking of predators, what kind of predators do you typically deal with? I actually have a camera on my coop to see what was trying to get them at night and I had a red tail fox. Oh gosh. And lots of raccoons. Yeah, raccoons, they're just, they're, they just will ravage through mm -hmm. your whole poultry setup real quickly. Mm -hmm. So so since you put up the aviary, you haven't seen much more action from no. those predators? No, I came face to face with a mink the other night out here. Oh gosh. But he was not able to get in, so. Wonderful. That's good news. So where did the inspiration come for this aviary? Like, did you have a Pinterest board, wish list, or was it just a vision in your head? Um, at first I was trying to shop aviaries to buy something and I quickly realized that they were, they didn't look natural enough. Um, so then I just started, I just drew one up and had a crew come out and build it. Wonderful. And so what are we keeping in this specific area? I know um, at Meyer we talk about, you know, the risk of um, integrating different uh, poultry types together and you know some people do it with ease with no issues and some others have issues with it but you seem to have done it uh, a great job everybody's hunky-dory mm -hmm. in here um, so what did how did you decide who was coming in this space and what kind of birds are in this space these are adult hens um, peacock large quail and pheasant um, and then I also have flying birds in here since it is an aviary, the, the finch and the budgies and the doves and pigeons. Um, but on the ground, these are all hardier birds. I don't have any silkies in here because they're a little bit more delicate. Mm -hmm. So I have a different pen for the silkies. And you also keep um, the button quail. So those are also in yes. a separate space I for safety. I learned that the hard way. Okay. Chickens eat button quail. Yeah, they, they are carnivores. <laughs> so um, it, that's why it's very important to do your research and to mm -hmm. figure out who's gonna do well with each other um, before you have a situation that's yes. pretty heartbreaking. Um, so why don't you show us kind yeah. of like your favorite parts of this aviary mm -hmm. and, um, and what has worked and what adjustments you've had to make that didn't work initially? Yes. Um, so I wanted to um, give them enough space to get off the ground if they wanted to for their feet. Um, because I don't think the pea gravel's ideal all the time for their feet. So I, lo I, I chose lots of roosting areas for them and different surfaces. So, and I love how creative you've got. They, I like, love repurposing things. So um, lots of this, these things are just all really inexpensive things that I've gathered at 
um, either garage sales or antique stores or off the side of the road. Um, so the headboards, um, any kind of anything for them to get up and roost on. I've hung a lot of things in here for the different birds to get up on the columns. Um, just branches that have come down in the yard. And I try and give all the birds um, natural things so they still feel like even though they are in a run or an aviary that they have natural things to build nest with and so they don't feel like they're just in, you know, a, a coop and, and bored all the time. They're still so, outside. Yeah, bored and buster, busters for them. So they still feel like they're outside. So I'm constantly trimming either pine or willow or anything that they enjoy and putting it in here. Um, so like I said, they feel like they're outside. And lots of things to roost on. Um, for my flying birds, I do lots of things for them to nest in. Um, baskets with hay or straw on the bottom they love. And if you if you give them things to pick from, they'll build nests. But if you don't have anything in there for them to gather, they'll never nest. They'll just lay their eggs on the ground and they'll never they'll never hatch anything. So I try and give them lots of natural materials to pick what they want to nest in. And even over here, I've got pigeons nesting. They're sitting on eggs. Um, the quail, I like to give ground area because they like to nest on the ground. The, the peacocks, the pheasant, and the quail prefer ground nesting. So I try to give them areas where they can hide and get away and nest if they want to. I love the old ladders, repurposed old ladders. Okay, it's a great, great way to get your birds some roosting space. It looks super cute and you're repurposing something that may not have a use at this point. And honestly, it's their favorite. I mean, even just hanging these old ladders, like this is full at night. They, they love these. Plus they have great ventilation because they're out here. Um, and it holds a lot of birds too. Right. Ladders. So now Kelly, I have to ask you, um, do you host a lot of guests at your home? Because this looks like the, the perfect guest quarters. <laughs> like, is this like a Airbnb? The, <laughs> then they won't stay long, right? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. So what's behind our nest? Like, okay. what are we doing back there? And I, I, I love to collect their feathers and put on the door. I just think it's so cute. I love it. I like to keep their food in here, away from the birds and nice and clean. Um, and just some of my work supplies I like to keep over here away from um, the birds getting in everything and having it get quite so dusty as the rest of it. So this is like your cutesy storage space, workspace, and then you also have some really good ventilation in here. Yes. Always really important, especially, guys, it is super hot and humid today. I think our humidity is like at 75, it feels like 100%, mm -hmm. but super hot and you know that airflow is super important. And then this side is the bird side. So um, I have more nesting boxes in here. My pigeons love to lay eggs in here. As you can see, always, always pigeon eggs. Um, and then some of the chickens also lay in here. Um, I try and do little houses for the small birds. Um, another roosting area in here. Lots of ventilation with the two windows and then Believe it or not, they do love looking at themselves in mirrors. They really do. They might think that they're seeing a friend I and think like they socializing. Do. They honestly get up there and look at themselves. And then a great feature about this shed is I love the fact that I have a door here that I can open and all my shavings can go right out. Oh, easy cleaning. Easy cleaning. Love that. Because the last thing you want to do is have to take a wheelbarrow through the entire yeah. area. And I found that if you make it easy to clean, It'll get cleaned more often. Way more often. It's one sweep <laughs> out and throw stuff down again. Yeah. Well, you are like the boredom buster queen of poultry. <laughs> I mean, they've got mirrors, they've got roosts of all shapes, sizes, materials. Um, there's just, oh, like materials for them to build nests in. It's just absolutely stunning. And Thank I just you. love what you're doing here. And the birds obviously are very happy. Thank you. <laughs> and so, you have 
more coop space, correct? I do. So it's not just this gorgeous, stunning, beautiful aviary. I do. I've learned that the more places you have to keep people happy, the, you'll use all of them. Right, <laughs> right. Well, and I, I find that at some point there's just never enough room. Yes. It's like, you know, I, I get asked a lot um, as a customer service rep uh, from Meyer, you know, what is the perfect coop? What is the what are the what is the perfect number of nesting boxes and roosting bars? You know, the sky's the limit. The sky's what the you limit. think you might need mm -hmm. might not be what you need five years from now because uh, the the fact of the matter is chickens are addicting, poultry is addicting, and um, they make you breakfast. Yes. So why not add more? I mean, it's just yeah. so easy to do. And they're calming and beautiful, and it's a wonderful place to relax. Yeah, definitely. All right. Well, let's go take a look okay. at some of your other yeah. setups. All right, so Kelly, what is this space used for? It looks like we've got like a small coop and then an enclosed run. What's going on in here? This is where I house my silkies because they're so docile. Um, and for any kind of breeding purposes, I like to keep them um, all together just so I know what I'm hatching. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, um, well, they're great mothers and they go broody all the time. And um, they'll hatch almost anything. Actually today, there's a little pheasant in there right now that hatched wow. so anything you put underneath of them for the most part they'll hatch we've got some powerhouse broodies in there so yeah if you want to try hatching with a broody silkies are the way to go I've heard nothing but success for stories but uh, keep in mind there are always the exceptions so you know we can't guarantee that all silkies will be wonderful mothers but for the most part they are that is their true calling in life is to be good mamas so do you have some ladies sitting on eggs now? I do. So here is a black silky right here. And she is currently sitting on silky eggs and these are the uh, ringneck pheasant eggs. Oh, that one's actually hatching right now. How cool is that? So will you keep Good the mama. baby pheasants in with them so yes. long as they're getting along and then when they're as old enough? As long as they're getting along, I will. And they should. And now she is sitting on um, some frizzle eggs, silky eggs, and also pheasant eggs. And look, a golf ball. <laughs> is that how you keep them from pecking at the eggs? I do. All right. I do. I know we get that question a lot. How do I keep my chickens from eating their eggs? And the answer is a golf ball. Mm -hmm. Or um, I've also used um, plastic Easter eggs. They'll start pecking at it and That's they won't good. get the satisfaction of breaking the shell and eating, eating. the yolk. And it's, there's no satisfaction, so they actually break the habit that way. Yeah, so, pretty good. cool. And Meyer Hatchery sells ceramic eggs. They look very pretty and you stick them in there and it gives them the false idea that there's an actual egg there. They go to peck it, there's no crack, there's no egg, and they're like, mm, that's not very much fun. And therefore the habit is broken. <laughs> So um, I see we have a turkey kind of wobbling on around here. Tell us a story about this turkey. Um, I have had her for a year and a half and she's just a great watchdog. So she just patrols the bird area and she's great about when she sees any kind of hawk or predator. She, you know, makes all kinds of noise and she at night roosts on top of the aviary and um, and what is her name? Her name's Amanda. Oh, all Such Amandas are name. great. Amanda's <laughs> just a great name. And we are protectors. We're mama bears. Yes. But yeah, turkeys can be protectors too. So not just geese or guineas. Turkeys are great protectors. They really do take pride in their home they and do. in their space. Um, I personally own turkeys. I just absolutely love them. They've got great personalities. They're very social. They are. They are. And now I have to ask, does this area have a special name? Silkyville. Silkyville. Makes sense <laughs> since it's where all yes. the silky mamas are. It's where all the sweet ones live. <laughs> and let's talk a little bit about waterfowl because that's where you yes. got your start with poultry. What kind of, like, what's your favorite breed of duck that you currently Ooh, own? Good question. There's so many that I enjoy. I love the look of a white crested just because they're glamorous. Ooh, look, they're so glamorous, so I do have some of those. And I have a special place in my heart for call ducks because I love the fact that they're full flight, mm -hmm. so they're enjoyable to watch. Okay, and you have the perfect space for them. They, Thank you. Are they free range all the time? All the time. Live on the pond? All the time. Okay. Sleep on the water, 
Um, and that's generally how they protect themselves. Yes. As they go out to the water, most predators will not get in the water mm -hmm. and swim to them. No. Um, so they'll go out there at night to protect themselves. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. Great setup. Thank you. And then there's one more space. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> a lot of people talk about like, what do I do if my, my chicken or my bird is acting off um, or it's acting sick or looking sick? And a lot of times we will recommend separating. Anytime you have a bird that looks off or is dealing with something that you, that could potentially spread to the rest of your flock, we want you to separate them. And you've created like the perfect space for that. So let's go take yes. a look. Okay, so tell us about this hen spittle. That's what it's called, the hen spittle. This is the hen spittle, bed and all. So this is where whenever I get a new bird, I like to put them in here for a week or two just so I can see if there's any underlying issues. Um, the current little ones I had gotten um, had a little bit of lice on them, so I'm treating them right now and they're, they're A-OK -okay now, but I want them to still get a little bit bigger. Um, or any bird that's just, I, I'm questioning it. I'll put them in here for a while until I can figure out what's wrong with them so the whole flock doesn't get infected by anything. Right. So it's always good to have an integration space. We've talked about, you know, with our customers, large dog crates, a separate run, a separate small coop. This is like the perfect example of a, a space with ventilation where they can stay and be safe and you can monitor them and see what's going on before you integrate them with the rest of your birds. Especially if you like these birds came from another area. Correct. So before you just go and stick those birds in with your current flock, you don't know if they could be carrying anything. Mm -hmm. Even if they're not sick, they could be carriers. You give them like a quarantine period and then you can slowly integrate them without getting your flock sick. Pretty cool. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kelly, for having us out. I absolutely love your setup. You've inspired me and I'm sure you've inspired others. Um, if you guys have any questions poultry wise, feel free to check us out at MeyerHatchery.com. Give us a chat, give us a call, give us an email, and be sure to follow us on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube for more fun stuff.